Thank you. I'd like to call the Village Board meeting to order. If you would stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everyone and welcome everyone watching at home. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Trustee Carter. Trustee Mariscal. Present. Trustee Kazam. Present. Trustee Gatt. Present. Trustee Weisenberg. Present. Trustee DeVore. Present. All right, we have nearly everyone here. Cheryl's home tonight, not feeling well, so we wish her speedy recovery, but glad everyone else could make it. We would be at item four, approval of the minutes from the Board of Trustees meeting on January 21st, 2020. I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. A second? A second. Any questions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. I do have one announcement tonight, and that is to encourage everyone to please participate in this comprehensive study that we're doing for the Village of Peoria Heights. We're going to get into that in more detail a, a little bit later, but it is so important that all voices are heard. It's your village, and it's your plan, so your board wants your participation. Madam Clerk, any correspondence? Yes, I have one letter. Uh, this was written to the Peoria Heights Volunteer Fire Department. It reads, Attention Greg Walters. Enclosed is a check in appreciation for the great service you, your son, and one other member of the Heights Fire Department gave me last Friday, January 24th, when I had a problem with not being able to put any weight on my left leg. I was at my hairdresser's home on Vincent Avenue and she made the call to your department. Two of you carried me out to our car so my husband could take me to Proctor ER. Your service was very professional, very prompt, and so very much appreciated. Many thanks, Shirley and Mel Eady. Thank you, Chief Walters, and give our best to all of your folks. And well. Job well done. All right, we would be at comments from the audience. If you uh, would like to address the board, please come forward, give your name and address, and if possible, hold it to five minutes or less. Okay. Hugh, you're, I didn't know you are so fast. <laughs> but i got to run my business, too, so. <laughs> what happened to ladies first, Hugh? <laughs> She's going to take every okay. real close to five minutes. I won't. Um, I was asked to read this in um, from uh, Robbie Matheson. I'm sure many of you know and appreciate all that he's done uh, being a part of the village. He's lived his whole life here. So this was uh, something he wanted me to share with you because he could not be here today. So it's uh, to the trustees, Mayor Phelan and Chief Sutton. It's come to my attention from other Heights business owners. There's concern about street closures and special events throughout the spring and summer months. I would like to emphasize my feelings and thoughts on this matter. As a business owners, um, we've all decided to risk our family's financial livelihoods when going into business. When starting the process of finding a home to do business, the Heights was a no-brainer for me and many of the best locally owned establishments in the area. Together, we have all created a unique destination that continues to grow. At this pace, we will be one of the premier tourism driving communities of our size in the Midwest. Most of us chose the Heights because of the progressive, out-of-the-box leadership. Our ability to think outside the box is key for small business to prosper. Let's not, putting, let's not start putting our blinders on now. If we start strangling the creativity, we will lose our edge to neighboring communities. Peoria, at times, is a great example of this. I understand the concern for the neighborhoods. However, I would argue our nightlife, dining, walkability, lifestyle, and events are driving new people to move to the Heights. I would also argue the amount of people worried or upset are in the minority. I can personally say I speak to hundreds of Heights residents every year that love what's happening here. Gone are the days of manufacturing and big industry in our village. Tourism is our industry, like it or not. We have built a great foundation that we should be very proud of. Other communities would love to have this problem while they skimp by to pay for public services. Our public services are top notch due to sales taxes generated. We have the best public works and police departments in the area, hands down. This is provided through sales tax, creativity, and growth. 
In my opinion, the amount of street closure festivals is minimal and respectful. These things don't happen every weekend. If they did, I would not be in favor. The noise ordinances are followed and boundaries are important. Change is hard, but it's here. We must not stop the evolution of our growing community. However, new processes and steps may be put into place to allow greater efficiency for everyone. Thanks for everything you all do to make the height special. Regards, Robbie Matheson. Uh, well put, guy's a good, good word man. And uh, a great leader and very important part of this community. And uh, on a personal side, I love uh, what the Fine Art Fair brought to us last year. Some of you were at the mayor's breakfast uh, the other morning and I shared my feelings how, how wonderful it is to be a part of this community and um, I know that particular event uh, for me as a business owner uh, increased my business that day over the previous year same weekend by 15% and that's in the face of the previous year we had a beautiful 60 degree 63 degree day with a low of 55 all day we had a, a really big night and day fast forward to last year where I was up substantially. It was a day of horrible, misery, cold weather, nasty. That fine art fair saved my fat from fire that day. I grew my business on what could have been a horrible day just to, because of that wonderful event. I've gained new customers that travel from as far as Macomb, Illinois now. Uh, it was a great event, so I would love to see that event approved. Uh, I understand it's part and parcel. Now we have to consider uh, uh, also the, the possibility of St. Patrick's Day which has been a tremendous event without incident for years. So please consider Robbie's words, consider mine, and uh, let's keep moving in the right direction, please. Thanks. Thank you, Hugh. Hi, Barb. Name and address for the record, please. So, Barb Malasio, 510 West Wolf Road, Peoria, Illinois, 61614. Um, so, um, first of all, before I get into this, um, a huge kudos to um, Chief for um, Oliver's um, with that. A little bit of kind of shaken within the business district, but that, that was taken care of um, so quickly. So, um, thank you for that. We feel safe again. Um, so, respectfully, uh, Mayor Phelan and Minister, <coughs> excuse me, a Minister and Chief of Police Sutton and the Village Trustees. Regarding the Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair, the Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair is a free and family-oriented event. Our goal is to, pan to expand upon Mayor Phelan's request to recognize and support the arts within our community. In addition to the sculpture walk and the resolution and the declaration that was identified as the Ace Corridor was just the beginning of what was to be intended for the arts in Peoria Heights. The art fair provides many opportunities for a community to explore and support local art. The fact that one would question the viability of the art fair and that would bring to the heights in comparison to the taste of the heights or the St. Patrick's Day to me is unthinkable. Tax revenues that are viable to our community are parallel. The Peoria Heights Art Fair is beneficial to our community because it puts revenue back into its community with the taxes from the artists, from our small retail shops, and from the restaurants. With that being said, we want to provide a safe environment for our current and new patrons to the Peoria Heights community that they'll spend the day here and enjoy all that is offered in Peoria Heights. Whether it be buying from the artists or from our shops along Prospect during the art fair time. We have, as all of you know, many of our local shops and they're also be grabbing a bite to eat. The Chief of Police has commented excuse me, has committed to keeping the community safe and with Peoria Heights Arts Collaborative, our intent is to uphold that integrity and that commitment. Along with the support of the Chief of Police, Mayor Phelan, and other trustees, we want to close off prospect between Glenn and Cyberlene on May 9th. This closure ensures the safety of the individuals and families patronizing the Heights during our very free event. By calling into question of closing this section off of prospect and rerouting traffic jeopardizes the safety of the residents in this community then, to me, I feel one is challenging the integrity of our place of chief and its dedication to our citizens that he continually keeps safe here in Peoria Heights. Hi, Teresa. Hi. Okay, I'm Teresa McDay. Do you need my address? 
Yeah, you need yeah. Okay. Go right Thir ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. 3828 North Harvard Avenue in Peoria, Illinois, 61614. And I'm here tonight to speak to you as an artist. Um, as an artist in 2017, I was in need of a community. My mother had been diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was searching for some type of control in my life. I started documenting the journey of breast cancer survivors by painting their forever changed bodies and then photographing them. I worked with Barb Malachio at Exhibit A Gallery and the Peoria Susan G. Komen affiliate to create an event which came to be known as Paint the Heights Pink in October of 2018. Out of this event, Barb's brainchild, the 2019 Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair was born and subsequently the Peoria Heights Arts Collaborative. Events such as the Fine Art Fair, St. Patrick's Day, and the Taste of the Heights all help create a sense of community and pride and a growth in tourism. We want the word of mouth marketing about the Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair in the village of Peoria Heights to be a positive, a positive message and have a, a ripple effect throughout the area businesses. Closing Prospect Road for the duration of the Fine Art Fair and other events sets the scene for a quaint street fair while ensuring a safe venue for the vendors, the patrons, and families that come to enjoy the day. Peoria Heights events have become a destination, evidenced by the crowds that come to enjoy a concert at Poor Brothers during the summer concert series, a celebrate or celebrate St. Patty's Day at W.E. Sullivan's, meandering through the white tents of the Fine Art Fair on Mother's Day weekend, or sampling all the delicious cuisine at the Taste of the Heights. Happenings in the Heights are growing, and we need to continue to foster this growth by closing Prospect Road for the Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair. And I thank you for taking this into consideration tonight. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi. Got to lower this a little bit. Uh, Melissa Metternick, 4008 North Harvard Avenue, Peoria, 61614. I'm speaking tonight from three different perspectives. As a third generation owner of a commercial building on Prospect, a non-resident member of the Peoria Heights Chamber of Commerce, and a volunteer for the Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair this year as well as last year. As an owner of a commercial building in the Heights, I know if my tenants are not successful, are, are not successful, I will have a vacant building. Retail businesses are responsible for their own marketing, but they also rely on their location and their community to draw patrons to their business. I believe this is the goal of the Board of Trustees and the Chamber of Commerce to do as much as they can do to help the business and retail community thrive. Revenue to the retail businesses during the art fair means more tax revenue, which in turn means ensuring the budgets keep balanced and the heights continue on a positive path. This is a win for every citizen of Peoria Heights. As a volunteer for the Fine Art Fair last year, I was very surprised how much there was for me to learn about what all goes on behind the scenes of an art fair. I have attended art fairs for most of my life and I am an art lover. But being a volunteer showed me we cannot truly know <coughs> the details of what makes something 100% successful until we personally live it. I saw that Barb and Teresa know what the best way to make success happen. Tent location, safety while in their tents, tent setup, ease of an artist to unload their art, and many other details that help an artist choose this fine art fair rather than another on the same date are some of the things I learned were important. It was continually stressed at committee meetings last year the importance of making sure everyone felt welcome, there, that there were fun activities for children, and there was no cost for anyone to attend. In other words, it was the goal to make it a fun-filled day for families of all economic backgrounds to be greeted by friendly faces, hear music, and most importantly, experience the beauty of fine art. As a building owner, a chamber member, and a volunteer, 
I am asking the trustees to support the businesses and the citizens of the Heights by voting yes to closing both lanes of prospect from Glen to Saberling on May 9th for the Fine Art Fair. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Jody Summers, 1932 West Teton, Emporia. I own Pedal Your Own Party, which is getting ready to open up here in a couple months in the Heights. Um, as uh, we stated after the passing of all of our ordinances, uh, we would love to have the uh, board members on our inaugural ride on St. Patrick's Day. So I brought each of you an invitation today. Um, I'm going to hand it to uh, Village Council, and yours should be the next one as you pass it along the line. Um, there's an RSVB date and a phone number to call if you want to ride. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jody. Who's in front? Who's in front? Hey, hey. Mr. Right, Julie, Mr. There. Summers, does that thing have an, like an emergency motor on it? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Just call the trusty wife. I don't know how I follow that, but um, I'm Julie Bielfeld, and I um, live at 4737 North Granby Drive, but I'm actually reading a letter for um, Sarah O'Shea, the owner of So Chic Boutique, and it is um, to the Peoria Heights Village Board. Dear Peoria Heights Village Board, please accept this letter as my strong, enthusiastic support of the Fine Art Fair. As a boutique owner here in Peoria Heights, I'm thrilled to support most events that happen here on Prospect that bring life, energy, and traffic to all of our businesses, but I especially support the Fine Art Fair that brings attendees who truly want to come experience all that Peoria Heights has to offer. These attendees come to spend the day, wander through the businesses, and appreciate what we have to offer, and come with intentions of sharing their time and resources with the businesses and makers as a part of the event. As much as I support any event that brings traffic to the Heights, not all other events bring attendees who want to experience the businesses who are here every day. They simply came for the event the attraction itself. That's not the case with the Fine Arts Fair. That crowd which is so refreshing and so valuable to our small business. My team and I fully support this event and hope that it will get the resources and support it deserves, including blocking off the street to allow for a full experience. We love Peoria Heights, and having had our shop here for the last three years has shown us what energy and vibrancy there can be, especially on days when the community comes together to host something of magnitude. I appreciate the opportunity to share my support warmly, Sarah O'Shea, owner of So Chic Boutique. And then I would like to support, personally support this by saying having kind of started with um, the baby, it was the village's art committee that this was all spawning out of that led us to have an arts collaborative so that we can grow and just reach out and do better for our arts and our community. So it has a beginning, and who knows what the end is. I hope it is growth. <coughs> One interesting perspective, and we keep hearing how bad the weather was last year, and it was wretched. It was awful. That I actually met people who made a point of coming out because it was a rainy day so that this would continue. I thought that was fantastic. That's the type of support you want to hear. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Hi, Billy. <clears throat> William Blasek, 318 West Northridge Lane, Peoria, Illinois, also owner of W.E. Sullivan's in Peoria Heights. I just was wanted to come up here and talk about the Fine Art Fair and the support for it. The business that it brought to my um, pub last year was, like you said, we were up 15 to 20 percent. I remember that day being rainy and thinking it was going to be a pretty easy day and running around and having to call in extra help. Um, and with that being said, just the openness that the village has had with welcoming my business in three years ago and with my event with St. Patrick's Day and um, with the Fine Arts Fair and with the Taste. It, the Taste first year became my second best day of the year with my uh, St. Patrick's Day being the, my number one and, um, the, and I know in the top ten with uh, 
Heights Fine Art Fair, and I have the feeling that this Fine Arts Fair is going to be one of the premier events in the in the state because I it's just growing, and I can you can just see it's going to be one of those events that brings in families and everybody else into this town and just highlights our community and shows everything that we have to offer. So I just think it's uh, very important that we just give it room to expand and let them have the streets. But thank you for your time. Thanks, Bill. Hi, Suzanne. If you'd give your name and address, please. Public speaking at all, 1108 East Iota, Peoria Heights. I speak as a resident. I, most of these people are all business owners. I think Julie's a resident also. We also support closing the streets. Our grandson lives a half a block. I'm not concerned about safety at all. All these events are bringing people in. I think it's a great idea. I just want you to support closing the streets. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, I'm sorry, can I get your last name, please? Cranford. Cranford, Cranford thank you. All right, we're still at public comment. Going once, going twice. Public comments closed. On to trustee reports. The first is public works. Trustee Carter is not here. You want to start out for our guys? Or sure, Dave, if you'd like to make, you have any comments Dave or Mike, tonight? Jump right in. Good evening. I wanted to talk real quick about, um, since this meeting is being videotaped, unauthorized use of fire hydrants. In the past, um, past year, we've had two or three instances where contractors have been using fire hydrants unauthorized. That is not allowed. So if a village resident or anybody sees anyone other than a public works employee in a public works truck or a member of our fire department using a fire hydrant, I ask them that they please call the water office and let us know so we can investigate it. That's all I got. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Mike, <coughs> great job on snow removal last week. So anything else? No, nope, nothing else. No, thank you. Any questions for public works? Okay. Building and property maintenance, Trustee Mariscal. Uh, I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. You have something on building maintenance? Uh, just uh, on, under old business, uh, is the board approved the new purchase of the boiler? They've, they're about two weeks in on the replacement. It's a long process, so uh, we're getting there. Uh, they're making great progress, so that's just the update. All right, economic and community development, Trustee Kazam. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to highlight the coffee hosted yesterday morning by Mayor Phelan. We had almost 100 people in attendance. It was very, very successful. There were so many issues discussed at that meeting, but one of the most exciting was the comprehensive plan, which is being released this um, month with Peoria Heights. And I, I'm looking for Mike Bailey in the audience. I don't. He's know. here. He, oh, I, there you go. You're, okay. He has some information on dates and meetings, so I'm going to ask him to come up and say a few words that, that about sounds that. Good. If you would. Hello, every, hello, everybody. I'm Mike Bailey. Um, so I've been working with um, House Hill Levine and Farnsworth Group, um, and so we've got a couple magic dates coming up. Um, uh, what, we're, what we're doing in, in about two weeks, we're beginning the informa information gathering phase of the comprehensive plan. And so what we've been doing together as an administrative staff is putting together an advisory committee, which has about 24 members, uh, a business focus group, which has about 14 members, um, and then uh, choosing people, uh, and we've asked for input from those of you around the horseshoe here, um, uh, for who we should be interviewing as local stakeholders. We need to choose nine of those. Um, they will be interviewed um, on March, Wednesday, March 4th, and Thursday, March 5th here at Village Hall. Uh, again, those two dates are sort of the magic dates, so if everybody could put those in their calendars. Um, the advisory panel and the business focus group are going to meet for the first time on that Wednesday and that Thursday, again, March 4th and March 5th. But the really big meeting, um, which is open to the public, is the, uh, the visioning meeting. It's a planning session. Um, we are hoping to have 200 people or more um, at that meeting. Um, we have uh, uh, been, been able to book, um, thanks to the Peoria Heights School District, thank you very much, the Peoria Heights Grade School Gym for that planning session. It's going to be at 6.30 p.m. that Thursday night. 
again, March the 5th. We hope to see all of you there. Um, you know, what we'll do there is we'll begin planning. People will sit down with paper and pen, um, and they'll break off into small groups, and they'll start, and we'll, we'll start to, to begin not only gathering information, but building consensus. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to, to well, answer them. I think you covered the, the who and the, and the, the where, but if you cover the what, 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 what this document is and what, what it'll deliver to us and why it's so important. Sure. So the so the uh, the comprehensive plan um, is is going to the information gathering process is going to hap happen over the next 12 to 15 months, and what we're going to do is we're going to lay out a plan for uh, the next 20 years of development in the in the Heights uh, and how it feels and how it looks, and that's why we're gathering input from the community, the people who live here, who have the most to gain and or lose, but we think gain uh, from participating in this comprehensive plan. Uh, so that we can determine, you know, uh, where, where we're going as a community. So it's going to it's going to deal with uh, uh, after you know a lot of focus on the on the downtown business corridor for many many years. Uh, we're going to start to uh, evolve a little bit and start to take a, uh, a a really close look at the neighborhoods and what the needs of the neighborhoods are. There's a very high demand for housing in the Heights. Uh, we will continue to look at the business corridors, um, at the at, at the, what the infrastructure needs of the community are, um, at parks and open space. Um, so there'll be a, there'll be a lot of facets of this comprehensive plan. And the village is investing a lot of money in this this plan because it is a blueprint. It's a vision for the future, not just five years out, but mm -hmm. even 15 and 20 and 25 years out into the future. So if you think we need more green space, if we need more roads, if we need more sidewalks, more lighting, all these meetings will be open to the, the public, and we encourage you all to attend. Just because you didn't end up on a, one of the panels doesn't mean anything. All voices are equal, and all voices need to be heard. Yeah, yeah. please show up at the, on you know, Thursday, March the 5th, um, again, 6.30 p.m. at the St. Thomas Great School Gym. We'd love to see all of you there. Peoria Heights. In Peoria, what did I say? Oh, I'm sorry, Peoria Heights Great School. I'm sorry, Peoria Heights Great School Gym. So. Any questions on the plan? If I may take the liberty of interrupting you while we have Mike up here. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that's very important going on as far as economic development is the capital uh, grant that we received for the improvement of $68.5 million for Route 29. Uh, due to a family issue, I was unable to make a meeting with the Secretary of Transportation at a transportation workshop recently. I asked Mike to attend in my place. and. Uh, we actually have a, a good relationship with the Secretary of Transportation. You were able to speak with him. So mm -hmm. could you explain the letter we sent, why that's important, we get some money released earlier, and what the answer the Secretary gave you? Yeah, so we just we sent a letter to the Secretary uh, Osman, who, is, who is actually was the uh, f former director of, of uh, IDOT Region 4, which is Peoria. Um, he continues to, he's the interim Secretary of Transportation for the state of Illinois. He continues to live here in Peoria. So he's a local face um, that we've known for many, many years. Um, some of you may know Dale Reisinger as well, who is also a former state senator, but also was the Region 4 IDOT director. Um, and so we really tapped into those resources um, and, you know, uh, uh, attempted to keep this sort of dialogue going back and forth. The Heights received a $68.5 million grant uh, through the state capital plan last spring um, you know that we're talking about 45 billion dollars total but the but the demands on that money every community in the state has infrastructure needs and the Heights is one of them um, and so we really want to get into in, in the queue as quickly as we can so that work can begin we've got you know there's private investment um, uh, promises of pri private investment going on in that corridor um, and it, all of it is sort of waiting on on this road to be rebuilt um, it is widely recognized as an unsafe road um, it gets a lot of traffic particularly during morning and and afternoon drive time uh, and uh, and the roads just in poor condition um, and so uh, one of the really good things we took away from this recent meeting uh, one of the things they like you to do is they like the communities to pony up money up front and then reimburse be reimbursed by the state later um, and so but you're talking about millions of dollars uh, conceivably to begin the engineering studies which are required before you start breaking up concrete and pouring new concrete right and so uh, that's what we need is that engineering study fortunately for us uh, Galena Road that portion of Route 29 has been on IDOT's radar screen for many, many years. 
uh, and so they know what the needs there are, and so it's a it's a priority for them to get that. And so they are going to be doing uh, some of that engineering study work in house, um, which relieves some of the burden on us. Um, we should be getting a letter to that effect um, relatively quickly. Uh, and so that, you know, we obviously have another spring legislative session in Springfield, and the legislature will be authorizing resources uh, for these for these for this road work. Well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Senator Kaler and Representative Gordon Booth for their support of this project, but also we've been lucky, fortunate to have retired Senator Dale Reisinger offer his services to us just as a, a, as a friend. And you may know that uh, Senator Reisinger spent a career with IDOT, mm -hmm. and even though we've got a great relationship with IDOT, they're not the easiest folks to work with, so there's a lot of red tape, there's a, a lot of bureaucracy, so Dale has offered uh, to help, and he helped us shape the letter we sent to the Secretary of Transportation. That's right. And, you know, maintaining those channels of communication um, with our local representatives, um, uh, Dave Kaler and John Gordon Booth specifically, but also with the governor's office is really, really critical. Uh, you know, as I said, the demands on that money are, are, are really, really great. And so uh, we want to be at the, front, at, at the front of that line. It's going to be, you know, this money is going to be doled out over the next several years. But we want to be at the front of that line at the beginning rather than at the end. Um, so, you know, we've really, we've really worked hard to try to keep those channels of communication open. Um, the governor was here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Mike and others from the village board, uh, we all went out uh, and met with him. And um, it's just a good thing to do, you know, it's to keep those channels open. So, village residents, I encourage you to think what would that Galena Road corridor look like if we had a safe road there, or when we will have a safe road there. And uh, we, I think it's uh, just a, a great spot for new housing and, and new businesses. So we're Yeah, investment, to, you know, to connect the lower and upper Peoria Heights, right, uh, on top of the bluff and below it as well. So. so let me be quiet and see if there are any questions that anyone may have for you on that. Okay. Good. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt, Trust no, Examiner. No, no. I just want to add if anyone, if any of the residents want a tangible reminder of dates and times and also how you can participate um, via online um, participation, please stop by the water office because we have flyers for that. Um, so please do that. And that's really it. Uh, I can also add if you are unable to stop by, if you give us a call at the water office, we would be happy to mail one to you. Is that it, Trustee Kazam? That's everything, thank you. Okay. Administration of Personnel, Trustee Get, take it away. Thank you, Mayor Phelan. I don't have anything to report at this time unless a man with many hats has anything to add to it, Chief. The, the only thing I have, uh, Trustee Get, is uh, next board meeting we'll have the first presentation of the budget. Uh, staff and department has been meeting on this, so uh, next board meeting you'll have your first presentation next year's budget, so that's all I have. Okay, that's it, Mayor. Okay, we have bit uh, fire. Trustee Weisenberg. Thanks, Mayor. As um, most are probably aware, we had a house fire on uh, Paris Avenue, um, and Chief Walters has uh, graciously agreed to come and uh, speak to that fire. Sure. Last Tuesday, uh, about 741, we received a call for a house fire at 902 East Paris Avenue. Um, and as we responded, uh, officers, Peoria Heights officers on the scene told our dispatcher that there was heavy fire and heavy smoke blowing out of the back of the house, which was transmitted to us. Uh, as soon as I received that information, uh, do what we normally do, we call for assistance through the Mavis system and we set up a Mavis box. Uh, about 30 seconds later, I got to the intersection of uh, War Drive and Boulevard and I could see it from there. Um, pulled up. Curry Heights Police Department, as always, did a great job. They had corralled the family. They got out on their own. They self-evacuated. I got out, and they had them corralled together. So that that took a, a huge load off the fire department's shoulders. Um, what I observed when I got there is we had a, a 904-square-foot house uh, with the whole back of the house was on fire, coming out every door and every window. And it was extending to a garage, which was a large three-story garage. Um, help got there very quickly. Um, within, let's see, within uh, 10 minutes of the call, we had first water on the fire. 
uh, was from the exterior, uh, from both sides. We had uh, stretched hose lines and were putting fire out that way. And we basically had the fire out within 16 minutes of initial dispatch, which from my perspective is outstanding, um, considering the volume of fire. Uh, we, had, we had issues with this particular building as far as gaining entry into it. Um, it was packed full of full of things. It was very tough to move around. Um, we had a very uh, aggressive interior attack from not just one set of firefighters, but two sets of firefighters going in from different angles to finally get to it. Once we got the fire put down, uh, we had a bigger concern, which was uh, rekindle. We do not want to come back to this. And with all the uh, uh, materials that were in this house, we had to dig through it. Uh, we were at the scene for three hours after the fire was out, just in making making sure it was out. Uh, it was very hard physical work, uh, but as fortunes would have it, we didn't get the call that night. I was worried about that when we left. Uh, like I said, we got the call at, at um, 741. I relieved the firefighters here at the firehouse at 1.16 a.m. Not only because of the hard work they did down there, that's, we have a lot more work to do when we get back to the firehouse. We had to get our apparatus back in shape. Uh, we had to get everything ready to go. So they, they were here for quite a long time, and I gotta tell you, they did a superb job, as did all our assistants. We had assistants from, from Peoria, uh, Chillicothe, uh, and West Peoria. And they were, they were there. At one point, we started out with just me on the scene, and within 10 minutes, I had 32 people. And uh, that's, that's, you know, feast or famine. And I like it that way. I like getting all those people. I prefer not to use everybody. But at, at one point, we used everybody. So uh, kudos to everybody who responded to it. And uh, we were able to uh, clear that scene. Um, one thing we did find out is we did not have an agreement for a board up contractor that has since been taken care of, because that's one thing we like to do. I don't like to leave a building open. And we don't have the tools, nor do we have the supplies to do that. Um, I worked with Chief Sutton. We've got that taken care of. Uh, it's just a matter of, a, not a phone call, but I can just call on the radio and say I need a board up crew. And I explain to them what it is I need, and that need is fulfilled. Um, that way, the, the building's secured, and if there's stuff that is still salvageable inside that house, it's secured. Um, therefore, somebody's not going to come in and rifle through the house. That was that was one of the issues we found there, and that has since been taken care of. And I thank you for your help on that. So. Was that something we never had? I don't think we did. I, I, I think we relied a lot on the street department. I think, have we not utilized you guys in the past? Two times. Yeah, and I don't think that's right for them because I don't think they keep that on, on, on hand, the wood. On, when we had our own dispatch center, we had a couple different companies that we used, but since the consolidation, that's changed because now it goes through Peoria. We've, we've remedied that. Now we're, it won't, there won't be no red tape. Once we call, they'll dispatch that company out. But it's a little different now that we've lost our dispatch center. Uh, now the smaller jobs public works can do, uh, but something like that we wouldn't ask. This is, this is above and beyond what, what they're capable of doing. We'd call in the professionals, so no putting. Any questions? It's, um, it's been kind of a busy couple, two, three weeks for the Peoria's fire because we've gone mutual aid to other departments around here. You may have seen it in the newspaper. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dunlap had a major fire in one of their, their buildings, and, and Peoria Heights was there helping them in the same way with Limestone. Uh, limestone fire protection district uh, we've gone out to them and we either stood by their fire station or we went down and assisted them at the scene so uh, th the Mabus system that we're part of is wonderful uh, you were there I think at our last meeting you were that was the night of that fire you were all out there I believe yeah <laughs> I just Questions? like to say good job and I'm, I'm very proud of um, our fire department um, I, I thought that I did see something online that um, was this family, did they lose everything and, yeah. um, and need things? Is yes. I know the school was collecting donations, the high school. Um, Ms. Hendricks at the high school was collecting uh, good. money donations and also clothing and such. I know they were, uh, we didn't leave them there. Uh, as, as usual, whenever there's an incident like that, people are displaced. We pick up the phone and give a call to Red Cross. Red Cross, Salvation Army are two organizations that we count on and they're great for us. Uh, we got a hold of Red Cross, they came out and they took care of all their needs for however long
long they're able to do so, whether it's food, whether it's clothing, shelter, uh, they get rooms for them in hotels for a, a period of time. And um, they just take care of it. That's what their job is. They get there and they take care of it. They do a superb job, both organizations. So do you know if somebody does want to help out, then do they just contact the school or? Yeah, the high school. Uh, Miss Hendricks was collecting the donations and the clothing. Okay. Well, oh, that's the job of the township to provide emergency assistance, and that is available too. So, but if anybody who would call here, we can get all that information. And, and if you know what, any specific needs, how the village can help, please let us know. Call us tomorrow or tell us tonight. I think the school would be a big help. The, the two churches in the community, we've got a food pantry where they can get food and other resources. So, but when you're traumatized like that, you're not thinking the way you should. So um, we're happy to help in any way we can. Trustee Weisberg, you still have the floor. Uh, nothing else. Is that it? Okay. Okay, next would be police, Trustee DeVore. Um, first, I just want to thank the police department and congratulate them on very quickly and efficiently um, making an arrest for the armed robbery that we had last week at um, Oliver's. Everyone came together and did a great job, so I thought that was very successful. Um, thank you again. Thanks, Chief, for all your hard work on that. Um, on top of that, I'd like to thank the citizens for their role in helping and sharing on social media and doing whatever they can to assist the police officers in making that arrest. I also like to thank the residents because last meeting um, chief had asked if you see panhandlers to please call the police station when you're seeing it um, not after we do not allow panhandlers it is against our ordinances to do that and we have been able to make an arrest um, someone this week that was panhandling that had warrants out for other issues so thank you again on that and keep up the work on that if you see panhandlers please do not hesitate to call um, and lastly, one thing I wanted to bring to everyone's attention is I sometimes forget that our police department has what we call a vacation check. If you are going on vacation and your home is going to be unattended, you can go to the police department and get on a list. And our police officers will do a rotation and check on your house to make sure everything is safe while you are gone. I think that's a nice um, thing that we offer and I don't think that it's as publicly known as it should be. And that's all. Unless Chief has anything you'd like to add. The only thing I'll add is appreciate the kind words. I just want to thank the community for their input. You know, community involvement on these type of cases are huge. You know, we, there's so much we can do, uh, but we had so many tips come in the first hour. It was posted online and other other outlets. So I just want to thank the community and, and, and also to touch on the panhandling. That turns into other things. And the rest we made, we've made numerous arrests on panhandling. We made one this morning that was more than just panhandling. It was a, you know, a, you know, a residential issue, a theft, a burglary. Uh, you know these things go hand in hand but again if they did not call this morning we wouldn't have probably found this guy uh, so just hats off to the community continue to get involved and like I said you're not bothering anybody we'd rather have 10 false calls and then one <laughs> invalid one if, if it means an arrest so you're not bothering anybody please reach out call dispatch and we'll get someone there so I just want to thank the community for all their input so okay thank you any questions on any of that Okay, we'll move right into old business. Any old business to come before the board? Hearing none, on to new business. The first is approval for publication of requests for proposals for elevator maintenance and the service contract. Trustee Mariscal had asked for a motion to approve that. I make a motion to approve that. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right. All right. We've talked about this in committee. Do you want to give it to Trustee Mariscal? Diane? Um, this is for the request for proposals from qualified firms to provide maintenance service on the elevator it's here located at Tower Park. Um, those can be submitted, I see on here, up until 11 a.m. on what date? It, it doesn't have a date in there. If I may, I always yeah. recommend at least three weeks to, to four weeks. So we'll publish this, assuming it's approved. We'll get it published, and so we would be asking for responses sometime middle of the week of March. Call it St. Patrick's Day, something like that. Okay, all right. Um, so those proposals can be sent. All of the information would be here on this public notice, um, where they need to go, when they need to be in, um, what's required for the bid. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always call 
um, Administrator Sutton, and he can answer any questions that you'd have if you're interested in bidding on this um, proposal for the maintenance of the elevator. Uh, did you have anything else? No, I did not. Thank okay. you. Any questions? <coughs> One thing I would interject, uh, yesterday at our coffee, people brought out the fact that the, the tower is very important to them. And it's an expense to maintain, but I think we need to do that. So this elevator is an ongoing uh, issue with us, but we need to keep after it. So Madam Clerk, call the roll. Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gett? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. All right, that passes. Next, approval of street closure for Peoria Heights Fine Art Fair on May 9th, 2020. I'd ask for a motion, Trustee Kazam? I make a motion to approve this. We have second. A second. Okay. Council, uh, this was a little bit of a unique circumstance, so would you explain what's going to happen here either way? Correct. At the last meeting in um, January, this was brought up. Um, did not get a sufficient number of votes, so it would be what we would consider a motion that failed. Um, there, there's confusion a lot of times under procedural rules between reconsideration of a motion that, that either failed or passed and just renewal of a motion. Um, or, uh, any motion, especially a motion that fails, can be renewed at any time at a subsequent meeting. So the, procedurally, this is not a reconsideration. This would be renewal of the same motion that failed at the last meeting. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, we'd be at, do you want to start, Trustee Exam? I just would like to make one comment. I think we heard some very compelling reasons um, as to why we should vote yes on closing the street for this event and others. But I want to add an education component that I think has not been addressed um, in this these conversations. And we are so fortunate, first of all, to have an arts alliance that will put something like this together in our community, but also expose our community and surrounding community to the arts. And this is something that is so often unfortunately because of funding is um, neglected or not able to be introduced in schools and this really helps to educate young people and adults about the arts and studies have shown over and over again that it promotes self-directed learning and also helps us to un little you know young people to understand and master other subjects such as math reading and social studies so it's really critical that we support the arts in our community and throughout other communities and I want to just bring that up Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Go ahead, Trustee yeah, Weisberg. Wants to speak. I guess I'll speak on this. Um, I was the Lone Ranger that spoke um, to this issue of increased traffic the last few meetings. I did so as a trustee and also as a parent with young children, well, younger children, they're getting kind of old now, that has lived in the area being discussed. Um, the idea that somehow my concerns regarding the traffic in the neighborhood I used to live in somehow offended the police department is a false narrative. Um, it isn't an opinion or a matter of the Pure Heights Police Department, but rather perhaps maybe Newton's Laws of Motion or Physics. Um, we're detouring four lanes of traffic going 25 miles an hour on Prospect into a residential neighborhood that can barely handle two lanes of traffic at a higher speed of 30 miles an hour. Um, Again, we are moving more traffic through narrower, narrower streets at a greater speed right through a residential neighborhood. Um, and I, I don't quite understand why the only disappointment was at my vote. Because literally, obviously, if you're moving all that traffic onto a smaller street with a greater speed limit, that obviously includes, includes additional risk to the residents <coughs> living on the street. Um, so my, my goal here as a trustee is to represent the people who sent me here. Um, I've also spoken with hundreds of Heights residents throughout my time, um, but also since these discussions started, I've had residents that live on the street reach out to me. Um, a few on Cyberling, um, one on Marietta, um, with concerns, concerns about the speed. Uh, prospect is 25 miles an hour, Columbus is 30 miles an hour, which really means 35. So you're moving four lanes of traffic on a one and a half lane street going 30, 35 miles an hour. That is an increased risk to the kids that have no sidewalks and they play in the streets. You see it all the time. Drive down there on a nice day and you will see kids in that street. 
Um, I don't know what the, the solution is. Um, I didn't mean to doom the art fair. That wasn't my objective. My objective was to look out for the, my constituents that live on that street. Um, a few constituents that lived on uh, Cyber Lane say they get no notice when the streets close. So they wake up for work. Some of them times they're running late. They turn to go up the street and it's closed. Um, so that was a burden on them as well. Um, and then the speed limit. The speed limit on Columbus is not posted. So it defaults to 30 miles an hour, which is faster than what it is on Prospect. So the, dis the disappointment should be pointed at that, that we're taking all this traffic and we're putting it on a narrow street with a greater speed limit. Now, if you're disappointed, if you're not disappointed at that, that doesn't pass the straight face test because that does increase the risk to the neighborhoods. Um, so I think if we consider closing this street, we should consider first reducing the speed limit and then instituting a policy that the neighborhood, the neighbors that are directly affected by the closure can get some kind of notification when the, the streets are gonna be closed so that they can plan ahead for these closures. Well, uh, it's pretty well, well known in advance that this is going to happen. I mean, it's public knowledge that's going to happen and the chief they've taken great strides to take care of the safety and uh, control the streets and monitor when the traffic's coming through there so I, I don't have a I don't think there will be a problem uh, there's plenty of notice that this is coming on that it's going to come up there, there's a lot of uh, uh, advanced notice with the uh, fine arts fair coming it's well known lots of people are coming and same with St. Patrick's Day and same with uh, Taste of the Heights. So I think uh, our police department does a fine job in, in working with public works and uh, slowing down the traffic through the neighborhoods. So I, I don't think there's really a big concern. I mean, if we want to address the current speed limit at a later date, we can, but I think that the police department is doing a fine job. Question. So I don't have a problem with it. Tristan, uh, question, Trust you got. If the speed limit's 30 miles an hour, how, how would they control the... Well, because there'll be uh, people walking around, they're gonna have to slow down. You don't go 30 miles an hour on that road. I've been on it many times, and I don't. I think there'll be, there won't be any problem. Well, they do. Huh? I've, I've been behind a few of them. Can there be temporary speed limits put on there when those events are happening? Is that a possibility? There can be, yes. So we can post, um, you know, a slower speed limit? Correct. And a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be repetitive, I know. Um, you know, this is the, last year was the first annual, so we learned from that. I think last meeting I stated that the feedback, um, you know, the briefing I got after the event from my officers uh, was that it would be better closing the street off. Um, and then I will default back to what we did during the last St. Patrick's Day closure, and that was uh, we kind of fine-tuned directing traffic northbound on Columbus with the help of more officers, public works. Uh, we kind of fine-tuned that event. So I think that's the same template that we should use for the art fair, and I know that because it worked. Um, I do, I, I agree that it's an inconvenience to some of the residents over there, and yeah, it is more traffic. Um, the speed limit is only as good as the enforcement. Am I going to have people over there? Yes, I am, and we can tempor temporarily lower it and post it. We have those signs. Um, but as I said last meeting that... My job is the entire community, not just who's in the business district, but who lives over in Trustee Weisenberg's ex-neighborhood. It's my job to make sure everybody's safe, not just a certain pocket, not just a certain street. It's my job to do it all, and that's what I will do. And I think that, uh, you know, we're talking about three times a year, these three major events. Um, it does a lot for the community. It really does. I think we get a lot of a lot of foot traffic. <clears throat> you, you you heard you heard earlier of the business owners that, that spoke. Um, it's my job to make sure that it's safe for the community, and that's what I will do. Uh, I'm not saying it's not an inconvenience, um, but we are very sensitive to all those issues over there regarding speeding because not everybody attends all these events. Um, and I you know. That's really, I mean, all I have to say about that, I, 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 well, I stand 
firm on my recommendation that we close the entire street because of what we saw last year. So um, I am I'm confident that our police department will make sure that uh, we get traffic rerouted up to Glen in a safe manner. Um, and that and the way we're going to do that is we're going to we're going to put more officers on. So. All right, uh, Trustee Weisenberg, you started this side. I want to make sure you're, you're finished with your remarks before we move on to anyone else. That Correct. So is this um, something that can be amended? It's not an actual ordinance. If I wanted to attach an amendment to it. Yeah, uh, an amendment is open any time. If you get a second, we'll vote on the amendment. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce the amendment now then. I move to uh, reduce the speed limit to 25 miles per hour on Columbus Avenue. Is that permanently or during the event? I would say permanently. I, I, Council, I'm not sure. That, right that would require that would require an ordinance, and that actually that, would have to be an agenda item to give everybody we, fair notice. The we could during that, the event is okay. Just we would have to notice the neighbors and everyone else were doing that. That would violate the Open Meetings Act to do so. <laughs> But, but a that? temporary just reduction event. just during just the hours the of the event would be okay. Is that so? Do you that, want that's that's okay? Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Now we're just on the amendment only. Any discussion on the amendment only? Uh, not to sound like a broken record, but um, just during the events, uh, deterring the traffic at the same speed it would be traveling through Prospect, through Columbus. How will we? What will we be using to post that? Temporary speed limit signs. Okay. Yeah. And we have those already. Is this going to be a big cost? Yeah, you should have them down as you drive, and plus every detour sign, I'll put a 25 mile an hour. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's all. And if I don't have them, I can update them. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion on the amendment? My only question would be enforcement. Passing something, are we going to be able to enforce it? We will have officers on that street, uh, and there will be enforcement. Okay. Madam Clerk, call the roll on the, the amendment. Uh, okay, not the main motion, but the amendment. This is for the amendment to reduce the speed limit to 25 miles an hour for the hours of the Fine Art Fair. Trustee Mariscal. Aye. Trustee Kazam. Aye. Trustee Gett. Aye. Trustee Weisenberg. Aye. Trustee DeVore. Aye. Okay, back to the main motion as amended. Does anyone else want to speak on the main motion as amended? The only question I had was, <coughs> are we voting on, because I'm, I'm for the fine art fair, um, but I know that when um, it was brought to us, um, initially that there were other costs that were going to be involved with the fine art fair that would fall back on the village um, did we get any type of a quote on that not yet and when i do that'll be brought back to the board trustee mariscal so then we would vote on that separately correct okay yeah this is just to close the street and along with the amendment that the detour route would have a speed limit of 25 miles an hour is that correct anyone else madam clerk call the roll Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gat? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. All right, that passes. Good luck with the art fair. <laughs> Next is approval of the street closure for St. Patrick's Day event on March 17th. 2020, Trustee Kazam, I'd ask for a motion to approve that. I make a motion to approve this. Do I have a second? All right. Go ahead, Beth. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> um, well, this is to close the, the street for St. Patrick's Day. So I think um, we are all in. We understand. Yeah. Discussion on the so, motion? So do we have to make another motion? I'll make the motion. I'll, I'll do it. I'm already public. But, um, sorry, Mayor. Lost my thought, train of thought. Okay, so I move to reduce the speed limit to 25 mile an hour uh, on March 27th, 2020. 17th. 17th, 2020 for the duration of the St. Patrick's Day. Okay, is there a second? Closure. Second. There is, all right, on the amendment. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, call the roll on the amendment. Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gadd? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. Okay, back to the main motion as amended. Is there any further discussion? Go, call.
call the roll, please. Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gett? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee Devore? Aye. Okay, thanks everyone for your good work on this. I appreciate it. Good luck, Billy. All right. Next is approval of the use of Tower Park for cystic fibrosis. Great Strides event on October 3rd, 2020. Trustee Kazam, I'd ask for a motion to approve. I make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there anyone here from that organization? Hi, welcome. Come on forward, please, and give us your name and tell us about your event, please. Hi. Um, my name is Kelly Fleeman. I'm with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And our event is a Great Strides Walk for Cystic Fibrosis. It's a fundraising event. I think, I want to say this is our... Um, 16th? Yes. 16? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hard to believe. I've been with the organization for 17 years, so 16 of those years we spent here at Tower Park. I think we started with... 25 attendants <laughs> attendees and um, last year we had over 300 so we stay confined to the park um, we do have Chief Sutton um, and one of his officers help us cross the street um, no road closures <laughs> for this one <laughs> so um, <laughs> no, no speed limit either <laughs> um, and I do work with um, the, the park district on um, Grandview to um, get their approval for the walk down um, Grandview Drive and back. Um, so it's a pretty easy, fun event, and we love having it here at Tower Park. Thank, Thank you. you for being here mm -hmm. to explain that. Thank you. Okay, any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gett? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. Okay, moving right along, approval of ordinance 2020-1620, an ordinance amending, amending video gaming regulations. Trustee Gett, I'd ask for a motion to approve that. I make a motion to approve. And ordinance. a second? I second. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Trustee Gett. Okay, this is pretty much mirroring what the, the, the state statute on uh, gaming machines and uh, establishments throughout the state. So we're just looking to do the same here in Peoria Heights to increase it from five per establishment to six per establishment. And I mean, they don't automatically get to increase. They got to come up and apply for it and, and uh, pay a small fee. But I think we might as well go ahead and go with it. So thank you, Trustee Get. Any questions? Madam Clerk, call the roll. <coughs> Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gett? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. All right, that passes. Next, gratification and confirmation of approval of Ordinance 2019-1605, an ordinance adopting certain regulations and public records by reference as criteria for the issuance of construction, reconstruction, alteration, and installation permits within the village of Peoria Heights. Trustee get it, ask for a motion to approve that. I make a motion to approve it. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, Trustee Get, go ahead. Well, I'm gonna pass this over to council. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, if this looks familiar, um, it, it, it is. This is an ordinance that we adopted that updated our building codes. Um, there's a relatively recent statutory enactment that the um, Illinois Public Building Commission wants notice, not after you've adopted new building codes, but 30 days in advance. So I caught that after we had adopted this. I sent that notice out in the middle of last month, in the middle of January. Um, so all we're doing is reconfirming the ordinance so that we're now in compliance with that notice to the, and, and, and who knows where it goes, you email to an info at um, email address, you get nothing back, but they're on notice now that we've updated our building codes. So this is really just a, a procedural uh, requirement and I would ask that, that you uh, re-approve the ordinance that's already been approved. <laughs> Thank you. I explained that well, didn't I? <laughs> All right, if we're ready to vote, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gett? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVork? Aye. All right, that passes. Finally, we'd be at the Treasurer's Report, Madam Clerk. 
close of the end of January 2020, there was $2,630,021.43 in the Village Controlled Accounts, and there was $1,075,967.15 in the Waterworks Controlled Accounts. You've heard the treasurer's report. I'd uh, entertain a motion to approve it. I make a motion to approve the treasurer's report. I have a report. second? Second. Any questions on the motion? Questions on the report? Madam Clerk, call the roll. Trustee Mariscal? Aye. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gett? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. That passes. Trustee Gett? I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, we're adjourned.